Thank you so much for joining everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're calling from. Welcome to our live product demo for the trade platform. Um, thank you so much for being here and uh, for joining us. I'll be your host today. My name is Sandra Baltar. I'm on the mar marketing team and I'm joined by my colleague, Sajil Malik, who is an automation expert and a sales engineer here at Trey.io. For today's use case, we're going to look at how we can lift engagement via personalized marketing emails through reverse ETL. You may have heard of ETL, which is extract, transform, and load. It's basically copying data from one or more sources into a warehouse. The warehouse is the source of truth for your data. So what if you want to use that data uh, from the warehouse to take a certain action? Well, that's where reverse ETL comes in. With reverse ETL, we take the data from the warehouse and send it to a different system like a marketing automation platform so we can action the, da the data however we choose to. What we'll see today is how we can get user information through a form on our website. In this example, we'll, we'll use type form where a person adds their information when requesting a demo. We then create the lead in Marketo, send that data to BigQuery, a data warehouse. Uh, with that user information in the warehouse, we can use it in our marketing nurture flows. So for instance, we want to send a specific sales email uh, or sales emails to people in sales in our database. We can do that. Finally, we're going to alert the specific owner of the lead in Slack. So with that, I think uh, you've all heard enough of me actually talking about this. Um, I hope you're all ready to actually see the trade platform. So Jill, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and hand it over to you to show everyone how we can do this. Let's actually dive, dive into Trey a little bit beyond you know, the use case itself. Today, we'll talk about a reverse ETL as a concept, but understand as we go through that this is really one element of the art of the possible, right? So to kick us off, uh, before we jump into that specific automation itself, let's kind of get our bearings with what's available to us, right? What does a Trey platform have to offer? So a good place to start often is with a workflow and don't worry, you'll see visually what a workflow is very soon, but conceptually a workflow is just an automation or integration use case in the situation that you're, you know, you're manually using a number of systems internally, maybe a CRM like Salesforce or a marketing automation platform like Marketo, you know, BigQuery, Typeform, NetSuite, et cetera. And you really need to streamline and connect those systems together as well as the processes that underline them. So the processes and those connections will be built visually as workflows on trade. And here you can see in my organization account, I have a sort of gluttony of workflows automating different departmental business processes from marketing ops, whenever Zoom webinars are created to automatically create leads that are ingested in Salesforce and notified to our team members in Slack or you know, a finance use case such that whenever a deal closes in Salesforce, we automatically start that sales order and invoicing process in NetSuite immediately, you know, as well as HR automations for onboarding as such. Really, any system that has an API or database or some availability to interact with the data is fair game to build an automation between. So maybe in one, maybe about one minute or 30 seconds, let's talk about some high level features here. So you may notice I'm in my organization workspace, which allows for more of that personalization and organization and team collaboration, right? All of these organization uh, workflows shared at this workspace can be built together with the rest of your team but you also do have a personal workspace for any sort of ad hoc building, testing, sandbox workflow building as well. One final piece I wanna highlight very briefly is the ability to sort of enshrine role-based access control as part of your automation strategy, right? So in Trey, you have the ability to ascribe roles such as owner, admin, contributor, and viewer to start partitioning that workflow access and really dividing who has access to what. And this is really useful in larger teams where you need to project manage what a specific user like Benjamin Keen here, for example, is actually building in Trey in terms of the workflows that he's connected and making sure those automations are intact. So give me one second, let me, perfect. So I think to kick us off today, as Sander mentioned, 
right? We have a very unique use case, a sort of lead ingestion slash nurture use case with a sprinkle of what's called reverse ETL, where we utilize data that may already exist in a data warehouse to enrich our nurturing decisions and determine which campaign campaign these new leads need to actually be directed towards. So to make the best use of our time, let's actually dive in the platform itself and show how you can automate this very frustratingly disconnected process, right? So if you take a close look here, this, what you see in front of you is actually the Trey workflow builder itself. This is the heart of our product. This is really the value that you can derive from Trey. And for most of you, this may be the first time you're seeing the platform. So let's, let's get acclimated quickly. And as part of that, if you take a close look here, we have three views to help you build customized automations that solve your specific business processes, right? In the center is the canvas where you'll see a sort of nice graphical layout upon which we've dragged and dropped connectors from the left-hand connectors panel to build that line by line solution to our internal business woes. And on the right side, here I'll click on Marketo as an example, we have the properties panel where you can actually perform the specific action you need to against whatever services you're looking to integrate with. You can authenticate into that service pretty seamlessly into your specific instance, and then start mapping any fields you need from any previous step in the workflow. In this case, I'm mapping some data from type form to create a lead dynamically in Marketo. So at the highest level, with the connectors, the components on the right-hand side, dragged onto this sort of whiteboarding, building, diagramming canvas in the center, and then configured on the right hand is really the flow of Trey and building a workflow. But let's get a bit deeper. The first question that's useful to ask is, what is this workflow in front of us actually automating so that we can understand what it takes to build something like this? So if you take a close look here, we can just visually kind of digest before even getting too specific what this workflow is doing. We have a triggering action from Typeform such that whenever a lead submits a form on Typeform, we retrieve data from that form we go into Marketo and we create a lead if it doesn't exist based on the data, the email that we receive from Typeform. If it does exist, we update it. And then we perform that search that Sandra mentioned, where we check to see if in our larger BigQuery data warehouse that contains all our account information, our lead information, that lead already exists. If it does, maybe we update some additional data that we receive from that Typeform. If it doesn't exist, we create it for the first time. But you know, in either case, we may have received a large set of data from a number of other sources, maybe our CRM, maybe you know our other marketing tools, such that based on that enriched data from our data warehouse, we can choose this new lead who has come in, which static list should they be attached to in terms of a precise nurturing flow that they should be a part of? Are they part of marketing? Were we able to de determine that from the data in, in BigQuery? Are they part of HR? And then if the lead has an owner, we can, email, we can directly message that owner on Slack direct uh, as a DM to ensure that they are on top and engage with this lead. But if the lead does not have an owner, maybe you notify the entire team and tell them to assign an owner to this lead that has just been created in Marketo. So now from a high level, let's kind of dive in, taking the bird's eye view approach. How do you build a workflow, right? So the beginning of every workflow is a trigger. Right? This is really an action that defines how you'd like the workflow to kick off. In this case, the workflow is kicking off from a lead form being submitted in type form right, in real time. But as I click and replace the trigger here, you'll notice we have a number of options to kick up a workflow. Maybe this is a one-off manual process, or maybe you're using this workflow for testing and you need, only need to run it when you need to. You can use a manual trigger. As you start moving into more scheduled automated flows, you can start using a schedule trigger, which can go as precise as every minute to pull or pull recurring data from some source. And as, once you get closer to one minute, it gets pseudo real time. But for the most precise real time actions, there are webhooks available, which are real time events given to us as a notification from a third party system. So for example, if a new task is created in Asana, that can send a webhook payload to Trey to kick off a whole automated process or a new lead is created in Eventbrite, or an event is created in Eventbrite, or a lead is uploaded in Facebook. So really what we've done is taken this webhook concept and made it easy for our users to not worry about that concept of webhook at all, just insert a trigger and tray, choose the action you want to listen to, and the second the action happens, your workflow will execute. 
And then even deep, more deep, uh, more deeply, you can send an email to a workflow with attachments like CSV attachments, PDF attachments, et cetera. And in the most interesting case, you can nest workflows within each other to kick off asynchronous parallel processes or to use workflows as sort of sub functions within larger workflows. So very cool here. In this use case, we've decided we want to ingest data from some lead form, right? So how do we take this data that's being submitted to train real time and map it into Marketo? So as I click on this connector here, this is a good time to talk about the connectors that are available in Tray, right? So as I scroll down in the connectors panel, the most self-explanatory section are the is the service connector, right? Where we've bundled APIs of popular services into nice visual blocks that in the case of Marketo and BigQuery, we've dragged into the builder to build this line by line automated solution. This section is based on customer requests. So if you don't see a connector that you would really like, you can ask us to build it for you. We'll put it on a sprint and get it deployed. Additionally, we do have core connectors where you can start executing meaningful business logic upon your flow, checking for conditions being true or false, undergoing branching logic, nesting workflows within each other. And even if there's a system that's not built in the connector panel and tray, you can generically connect to it with a universal client, right? So it's similar to Postman for those of you who have experience bundled into an automated environment. So if any API, if this API you want to connect to, whether it's REST, SOAP, GraphQL, ODATA, et cetera, exists, you can connect to it. Getting back into the builder, we, we've dragged in Marketo, we've clicked on it on the right side. What are we doing? So in the properties panel, now you can choose an action you want to conduct against that system. And what we've done is taken the API endpoints of these popular services, bundled them into operations so that you can select, in this case, I want to create a lead from some data I'm getting elsewhere in the workflow. After that, you can seamlessly authenticate into your Marketo instance. If you're doing this for the first time, quite simple. Choose your, your API endpoint domain, retrieve your client ID and client secret from your account. Once that's submitted, Trey will have access to your Marketo uh, instance and will encrypt any authorization token that's sent to us refresh it throughout a slide cycle. Now in the input data, let's actually map in some data so that we can create this lead dynamically. And then we'll move a bit more quickly through the flow. So in this case, maybe you want to create a lead with the first name that was submitted to us from the type form form submission. So how do we actually do that? In the properties panel, every input field is fair game to be dynamically mapped from a previous step in two manners. One potential is by dragging that field to a previous step, releasing, and seeing the raw data that's retrieved from that system. Secondly, you can change the type to JSON path and search for some field that may exist you know, from another uh, system that was previously in the workflow. Once you select that, now this is dynamically mapped. Typeform form comes in. We create a lead dynamically in Marketo based on whether their email already exists as a lead. Here, I've took, taken some liberties with the field mapping since this type form, form is not set up. So all of this is coming from some answers on a you know, generic type form response. Now let's go to BigQuery very quickly. From that lead information, maybe we run a query in this project to see if there is a lead already in our database that has this ID. If the lead does exist, maybe we update that with some additional interesting data that we found in Marketo. If it does not exist, maybe we create some of that data for the first time and map in individual fields in terms of the columns that exist in BigQuery from the data that we're receiving from Typeform and Marketo. Now, in this case, we use a core connector or data storage connector so that we can kind of you know, normalize the data. In the case that the lead does not exist, we may not have any interesting data from BigQuery, right? The only data that we have is from Typeform. But in the case that the lead does exist, we actually do have the data from BigQuery here. So to handle both events, we create what's, used, uh, what's called a data storage so that you know, we can kind of get both situations within one connector so that it can be mapped in further steps. Finally, the most, one of the most interesting parts of this workflow is dragging in a branch, right? A core connector that allows us to start executing different actions upon a property that could be one of many different values. So maybe in BigQuery, we actually did have a department field or a title field that could help us partition that specific lead who has been seen, you know, maybe via segment or maybe via some other CRM into the correct nurture flow in Marketo. Or maybe that data does not exist. And we have some relation to what that lead may need to go to uh, in Typeform. But based on that, we take in 
that department. And depending on what it is, we start sending them to different lists, static lists inside of Marketo, in taking the lead ID from the lead that we've created or updated if existed, and then dividing them into the correct static list so that in Marketo, a nurture flow automation is kicked off behind the scenes and they're actually submitted to the correct campaign. Now, finally, in this Boolean condition, again, you know, we're choosing an operation, Boolean condition, we're comparing two values. In this case, we're checking to see whether you know, an owner email exists as part of either the BigQuery result or the Typeform submission. And if it does exist and it's not equal to null, maybe we get the user by their owner email and by their user ID, we send them a direct message on Slack saying, hey, this person with their first name and last name just requested a demo for Trey in this example. Uh, please reach out to that lead and keep them engaged. But in the case that the lead does not have an owner, uh, we actually message the team saying, please assign the lead to a rep. And then even below, you can customize that form with any sort of attachments that you need with the lead name, the email, et cetera. So at a high level, you know, now that this workflow has been created, you've essentially created kind of emergent value, something completely new where new leads that are created from type, lo uh, type form are automatically created in your marketing automation platform, Marketo in this case, but it doesn't stop there. You automatically take actions based on other residual data you may have in your data warehouse to really divide them into the correct nurture campaign so that you're up to date with these leads and making sure they're being delivered the best content available for, available for them. And you're even making sure your team is in sync. So, you know, a very unique disparate connection of, of all these services here. But from us at trade.io, thank you so much for joining. Feel free to use the same Zoom link uh, to join the next weekly demo where we cover you know, a completely different use case. Uh, so you can use that same link that you used, to uh, that you used today to join us um, the next week. So hope to see you all next week. Have a great day um, and thanks again.